Hi, Kai. Uh, Jerry, Zach. Uh -huh. My name is Wei Kai, uh -huh. and this is really a great honor to be here with you. We have just finished the Brief Therapy Conference 2018. And here we are in San Francisco. And we are in the San Francisco, mm -hmm. and this is a huge success. Mm -hmm. I want to congratu congratulations to you. Thank you. This and is the 30th year of doing the Brief Therapy Conference, wow. and I'm glad that you are here and presenting on the faculty. You create all this uh, amazing, wonderful conference to us. It's, mm -hmm. uh, we learn a lot, deeply appreciate. Super. So, thank you. Thank you. And then, so, you recently wrote a book called Anatomy of uh, Experiential Impact Through Arizonian Psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a popular book. All the almost a lot of therapists get this book. And recently, we soon, pretty soon, we're going to publish this book in China. So you're the author, and I'm the translator. Another appreci appreciation to you. Like, a thank you. Give oh. me the opportunity to write a book, well, to translate that book. Well, you, you, you've made it possible. You have a team that's, that's helped you, but you're the primary translator, mm -hmm. and I'm very grateful for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. So I think the first question our reader have is, they want to know, What's the motivation for you to write this book? Mm -hmm. Well, this book is one in a number of series, but in some way it's a foundation. So I have one book on hypnosis that will be translated into Chinese, same publisher, one mm -hmm. book about the growth and development of the therapist mm -hmm. that will be translated. But this book is uh, a book, it's a model of therapy, and in that way it's a model of communication. And mm -hmm. it's based on four choice points five choice points, considering how do you determine the goal, what is it that you want to mm. say after you say hello, not just for a therapist, but for businessmen mm -hmm. and also for families. And then once you can target what you want to say, mm. and in this case, usually for therapy, it's some concept that you want the client to realize, being responsible, being motivated, uh, engaging in teamwork, showing leadership. What's the concept that you want to communicate? And then mm. some ways in which that concept could be divided into components that makes it easier for the context to be built by virtue of associating someone to the components. Once you know what it is that you want to say, then a second mm. point, here's the goal, what is it that I want to communicate, then a second point is, how can I communicate the goal? Mm. Which is very important, that we can gift wrap the goal, we can present the goal in a ritual, and the gift mm. wrapping could be a story, or a joke, or a symbolic experience, or an indirect suggestion, or hypnosis. Hypnosis is a way of gift wrapping ideas to make ideas come alive. Mm. Now it would be nice if communication was just about what do I want to say, how can I say it? But another point is what is the position that the client takes? What is the client's experiential language? What mm. does this client value? How can we focus the gift wrap goal through the client's lens? Mm. Now those uh, points are important, but a fourth point is how do we establish a process, a three-step process, how we set up, how we intervene, how we follow through, how we set up a three-step process to make mm. the gift-wrapped and tailored goal come alive. Mm. But in the center of this diamond is another interactive point. All of these points that mm. I'm talking about interact with each other. And the center point is who will I be as a communicator? Mm. Will I be intense? Will I be soft-spoken? Will I be polite? Will I be intellectual? Will I be emotional? Will I be more connected? How will I be as a communicator? Mm -hmm. So the first four points answer a simple question, how do I do therapy? That can be learned from a book. But the fifth point, who will I be as a communicator? That requires mentorship. That requires somebody to be there with you, guiding you, who knows the territory. And those are the two meta questions that's, that the book is written around. How, what, how will I, what will I do as a communicator, mm -hmm. therapist, coach? How will I be 
as a communicator, therapist, coach, mother, boss. And uh, so, uh, so the book can really be read by anyone. It's not, uh, it's more specific in its examples for psychotherapists, but the book also speaks about a model for empowering communication, making communication more effective. Message sent is not necessarily message received. Mm -hmm. We even know in a medical situation that a doctor could give a prescription mm -hmm. to a client and say, this is the medicine that you need, for example, for high blood pressure. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the client will follow through. So if we have some ways of enriching the message and making the message more powerful, then people will have a better chance of complying at the things that are really important to them. Stopping smoking, have a better relationship, get over depression or anxiety, and uh, accomplish the things that they want to in life. I think you're just uh, answering my following six questions. <laughs> because <laughs> okay. I was thinking that one of the questions is uh, how this can apply to the general population. Mm -hmm. Like normal people, they want to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And that's a fabulous example you talk about in the book. Mm -hmm. Like um, Milton Erickson, mm -hmm. Dr. Milton Erickson helped you to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. That was a very interesting story. and. How we're thinking how they can apply to general population, like yes. quitting smoking, losing weight. Yes, That's the book is not a cookbook. So it doesn't give you specific steps to follow to accomplish your goal. There are many excellent books that give specific steps. Mm. This book is more about the principles of communication and things that can be done in a way that improvises. So you talked about Milton Erickson, who was my mentor, who I first mm. visited in 1973. Mm. And Erickson, when he was 75, had a tribute written and then Margaret Mead, the great mm. anthropologist, was one of the people who wrote the tribute and said that Erickson invented a new approach for every client. Mm. So I hope that this book serves to stimulate people to use their creativity so that they can think about how to present messages in ways that those messages mm. will be realized. As I point out in the book, there's the, the land of information, what we mm. know, and there's the land of realization, what we conceive. Mm. And just because you know something, cigarettes are bad for your health, or be kind in human relationships, or you can change your mood, you don't have to be locked into your mood, just because we know that doesn't mean mm. we realize it. So it's a transformation. How do we create an evocative event that helps people move what they know into what they realize? And that doesn't it, 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 it's it, uh, using a cookbook, using a series of paint by numbers approaches mm. is not adequate for that. There are things that have to be invented improvisationally. And if you understand the principles, the book is written around principles. Mm. Each of the chapters outlines some principles of communication. So this is working with heuristics rather than algorithms. Mm. Heuristics are simplifying assumptions. Um, when you're playing chess uh, 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 or Go, when you're playing this kind of a game, you, you can't play like a computer and predict every possible move. Mm -hmm. A computer can, and that makes computers good at playing chess, and uh, probably I, I don't know how the computer programs work for playing Go, but uh, that is also something that can be worked out if you can compute all of the permutations. So when an expert is playing chess, they have simplifying assumptions. In the beginning of the game, control the center squares. Mm. Overprotection, if you overprotect one square, that builds an attack. Don't develop the queen too early. Mm. Castle the king early in the game. Protect the king. Now these don't guarantee winning. 
mm. their heuristic principles, their simplifying assumptions. So um, I, I know that there are a lot of approaches that give algorithms and say do step one, then step two, then step three, then step four, then step five. Mm. But this book is not built that way. It's built on understanding the principles that underlie effective influence communication, effective emotional communication. When you want to reach somebody's heart, when you want to reach somebody's spirit, you can't do that by having a series of concrete steps. This has to be done in a way that is more individualized. And so one of the principles in the book is how to individualize, how to speak the person's experiential language. The largest chapter in the book is how to tailor a message so that it's filtered through the values of the person to whom you're communicating. It's more like, uh, to me, it sounds like a creative communication, like uh, you're talking about yes. creati creativity. And also, to me, when I'm reading this book, it's kind of you're de deconstructing the art of psychotherapy, just like uh, Beethoven or Picasso. So it's really an art. Yes. And then you, another thing amazed me is how you can put this difficult professional knowledge, it translate them into like a, something very simple people can understand. How you do that? Because a lot uh -huh. of reader, they may want to, a lot of therapists, they may want to write a book, but for yeah. us, it's uh, amazing you write in that way. Well, I've been developing this model um, since I started training internationally, which I think was in 1978. And so I've been building this model, putting together the components. I think that my first presentation in China was in Kunming sometime in the mid-1980s, I think 85, 86, I came to China. Uh, I had been to uh, China before, uh, just as a, as a visitor, but I came to teach for the first time. And by that time, I had put together these components. Mm -hmm. Now, I've, uh, it took me a couple of decades more to feel confident that the model uh, was secure and that I could communicate the model. And I would hope that an adolescent could read this book and find things that were valuable. This is a, a book that's written in simple, lay, in simple language language for people, and it doesn't have complex psychological terms, very few of them. Um, so uh, it just is meant to stimulate people to think about how to empower their communication. Just because you say a message doesn't mean that it becomes alive in the heart of another person. Mm -hmm. And if you're giving people information, that's one style of communication. If you're explaining to someone how to build a car, you don't need to use evocative communication. You just need to explain the steps that are involved in building a car. But if you want to reach somebody's heart, if you want somebody to like you, to love you, to appreciate you, to uh, be connected to you, to be motivated, then you have to use a form of communication that is based more on art than it is on science. Artists know how to reach the human heart, so part of the book is about modeling what artists do. And um, I think that it fits very well with what I know about China. Mm -hmm. I've been coming to China to, to do teaching, which I've been very uh, lucky to be able to do. I enjoy very much coming to China. And what I understand about Chinese language is it's interpretive. That Chinese language doesn't have the exactitude of German. If you mm. take one of my books and put it into German, it almost doubles in size because the language is so precise. It's a great mm. language for science. But to me, Chinese is a more poetic language yeah. where you put together Khan and Symbolic. you create a concept and you w are trying to awaken a representation in mm. the person to whom you're communicating. So I think that science should be done in German and hypnosis should be done in Chinese because it's Chinese seems to me to be a perfect language to uh, for uh, eliciting evocative realizations rather than scientific facts. Not that you can't do that in Chinese, of course you can, but um, th what I understand about Chinese, the little I understand, mm. is a beautifully evocative language. It's like, uh, you know, in the book, there's a particular concept really struck me, interspersal. Mm -hmm. And then 
maybe you can give the reader a little bit like a demonstration just between me and you, mm -hmm. a simple thing so they can understand you're talking about that kind of interspersal communication, evocative communication. Sure. For example, I'm saying, okay, I feel nervous. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. My mind is yeah. not function. So um, there are ways of giving messages that make things come alive. We can pre present a message within a story, within a metaphor, within a symbol, within an anecdote, within a gesture. Mm. And we don't need to just use one form of communication to make a message come alive. The interspersal method is one of the most advanced methods that is outlined in the book. And mm. it has to do with saying something on the social level, but mm. meaning other things on the psychological level. Now, as a therapist, our, my patients come to me, and what I was trained to do was to interpret what the patient really means. Mm. So if the person says, it's a beautiful day, uh, on an affective level, they mean, mm. I'm feeling good. So I, uh, I was trained to listen to the communication, find the level of feeling, mm. and bring that to the surface. But in other forms of, st of therapy, what the person says is what they mean about their history and the templates that create their perceptions of reality. And we interpret the distortions uh, between what the person says and what the person means, and we bring that to the surface. Well, the interspersal method is based on the realization that if the client is intelligent enough to say one thing and mean many others, the therapist can be equally intelligent. Mm. So say you came to me and you're being nervous, and I know that you love plants and mm. gardening. Mm. And I don't know very much about plants. I know nothing about gardening, but I know enough to be able to talk about plants. So I can mm. say, you know, Wei Kai, perhaps you can think of a tree or remember a tree or there's some mm. tree that's really important to you. Now you know that the tree can grow because it establishes roots. Mm. And the roots can hold the tree securely, and the tree can feel secure because mm. the tree has these roots, and the roots are organs that sense mm. security. And the roots begin to reach out, and they begin to mm. spread, and as the roots spread, the tree can become more secure, Wakai, mm. and more at ease because at the base, there are roots that make things secure. Mm. But when you think of the tree, there are other things. There's the fact that the tree is resilient. Mm. And as a smaller tree, when there's a wind, the tree can just let it Go. bend in the wind, just mm -hmm. bend in the wind, just allow the wind to uh, um, cr create some sway some rustling mm. of the leaves but when the tree can sway the tree can accommodate to the wind and whatever the forces mm. are of the wind whatever forces are happening outside the tree can again be secure because the tree mm. has ways of being able to work with the wind now mm. then you have the sunlight and the tree mm -hmm. learns, as trees can, to grow in the direction that there's light. And by growing in the direction that there's light, the tree accommodates to the surroundings and the tree can become secure mm. in the light. So as I'm talking with you, um, inventing something about trees on the social level, I'm trying to awaken inside you memories of security, memories of flexibility, memories of growth, memories of accommodation that could be mm. useful to you in stabilizing yourself and not overwhelming yourself with anxiety. Mm. Now, if I say to you, stabilize yourself, anchor yourself, uh, bend, and bend when necessary, it doesn't have the mm. same no. meaning, yeah. but when I gift wrap, mm. 
these realizations. I'm trying to awaken representations mm -hmm. in you. I'm not trying to put something into you. I'm trying to elicit something, components from you. And when you do that in this um, way of gift wrapping ideas within an interspersal, then that gift wrapping itself empowers the message and makes simple ideas uh, much more alive. But truthfully, that's the most advanced method that I present in the book, and there's lots of other methods that are much mm. simpler. It's taken me years to practice um, saying something on the social level and meaning something else on the psychological level. So that's not a uh, technique for beginners, but mm. something that certainly at your level you can do. <laughs> mm -hmm. When you're talking about that, it's, it's like uh, I cannot tell the difference you are explain to me or you're doing the hypnosis to me. Yes. It's like you're creating an experience for me. Yes. And I can really sense. So, so this is an activation. Yes. So that um, you have to activate to realize the personal meaning of the message. Now, this is not so different than what any filmmaker does in creating mm. a motion picture or what any poet does or a novelist does. A novelist puts together sentences in a way that you, the, the reader does not understand the literary apparatus that the novelist is using and doesn't, the reader doesn't want to understand. The reader just wants to have the effect. If you understood what a writer was mm -hmm. doing in varying short and long sentences, even something as simple as that, it would interfere with your evocative enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Some part of the process needs to be invocative enjoyment and not um, dissecting uh, the technique of the novelist and turning it into information, then it would be like um, a magic trick and it would be like explaining the magic trick mm. and once you explain the magic trick it has no evocative joy anymore. If you have to explain the joke before you tell it, nobody's going to laugh. Mm. The, the, the joke mm. is, is a context in that elicits humor mm. and the techniques that are in the book, they're contexts that elicit conceptual realizations. So how you ex expect the reader to read this book and practice some of the skill, what's the end result or the outcome they can get for the, if, if they're a professional therapist or like their general population? Yeah. They probably have a different expectation right. about when they're reading a book. Well, it's like if you were a parent and you're talking with your adolescent about being responsible. Mm. Y you can't just say and explain the importance of being responsible. Responsible being responsible is a concept. And so then we also need to understand that responsibility is made up of many components. Mm. Memories, perceptions, uh, orientations, behaviors, tone, tempo. And if we can begin to recognize what psychologists have studied, that if you want to elicit a state, mm. you use a process that we have a scientific term for called redintegration. And redintegration means that you uh, uh, that you help somebody to access component parts. Mm -hmm. So rather than try to get the category, be responsible, mm -hmm. if somebody reading the book could look at the t chapter on establishing goals and understand that there could be a formula for how do you divide goals into component parts mm. and e then that could be something that a reader would practice in a business situation, in a psychotherapy situation, in a family situation. So um, to be able, so in, in the book there's not specific exercises, but I think any intelligent reader would pick something where mm. they felt weak at if they felt weak at establishing goals or gift wrapping or creating a process or tailoring, the mm -hmm. book has enough information that you could practice um, some of these components and then begin to build overall communicative vitality. Mm -hmm. So it's almost a little bit like going to a gym mm -hmm. where you have one chapter that isolates your biceps and then you have another chapter that isolates your triceps. Mm. 
and another chapter that isolates your pectoral muscles. And um, then you can see, do I have overall health or am my triceps a little weaker and I have to practice that? Mm -hmm. So I think the book should help people to identify their strengths and weaknesses in communication and be able to pick up on their weaknesses and exercise those and focus on something. Like when I'm, you know, you know, know because you've attended classes uh, of mine that mm -hmm. we want therapists in training to have some goal personal right. development goal, like they want to learn how to use the interspersonal technique, or a, a mm -hmm. more personal goal, they want to be more aware of interpersonal processes. So we, we ask in my training groups that therapists specify mm -hmm. what it is that they have as their self-development project. And I continue to do this myself. Before I do a therapy session, I, I have a, a goal of the week, something that I I'm working on improving myself. Mm. Maybe I'm working on improving my use of gestures or I'm mm. working on the issue of proximity and how mm -hmm. can I use proximity. So at my level, I'm working on goals that are very refined, but some of the goals can be very simple, like how do you gift wrap a message and how do you make a concept come alive to the person to whom you're speaking so that they can get it. It's not enough for a mm. boss to say to a member of the team, you're not motivated. It, it may be true and logical, but it doesn't help the person to access motivation. Mm. So a really good manager would want to know, how can I help to enliven the concept of motivation so that the team member can come alive and grasp it and feel it, and suddenly that becomes an identity. I am mm. a motivated person. Sure. I couldn't agree with you more because I've been to the master class and that from your book and also your training, the supervision really just helped me tremendously. And then so that's the next question. The China reader, they want to know what's your next book coming mm -hmm. and if they want to learn more from you yes. because your work is excellent, it's like art of psychotherapy. If they want Thank to learn you. more from you besides the book, what else they can do? Well, there are four books right now that are being translated, and I'm very grateful to the publisher. Please say the name of the publisher. The publisher is Oh uh, Yeah. Okay, super. Uh, and yeah, I'm Chu very Bansi. grateful to the publisher. Yes. And then there are also some organizations and some people who are helping to um, promote the book. Mr. Zhang, Mr. Yes. Ms. Lu, Zhen Qifeng. Ms. Li, Zhen Qifeng, yeah. and Fu Li Zhen. That's the organization. Yes. That's, uh, that's helping. And also and the organization is Tang Xinli. Tang Xinli. Very yes. grateful for them in promoting the book. But this is one book, and there's three other books that are being translated into mm. Chinese. One is about hypnotic induction, the very basics of how you do an induction of hypnosis, which can be trained in a book, it's a little bit about how do you get from Beijing to Shanghai? Well, there's ways of transporting yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem uh, with induction can be solved in a, in a book w without too much trouble. The utilization of hypnosis, what do you do once you're in Shanghai? That's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But this book is the fundamentals of induction. And then another book is about uh, exercises for developing therapists communicators from the bottom up. It's a modeling technique mm. of how to promote excellence, personal excellence. How do you develop yourself as a communicator? Mm. And the model should be transferable to um, leadership and it should be transferable to family life. And if you find somebody who's a great mother, try to understand what are the components of being a great mother, establish exercises that help you to develop those components. And then the other book is a, a more popular book for the general public on the habit of a happy life. Mm. This is, the principle there is that if people could have negative mm. addictions, mm. which could be gambling or it could be uh, um, 
pon pornography or getting lost in the internet, if you have negative addictions that like a drinking, like drinking, sure, or smoking, smoking. you can also have positive addictions. So this mm. the the book is around a concept of thirty days to a positive addiction, and this book does have exercises. This book is more paint by numbers. How can you create the steps that you need to have a positive addiction? It was I've very helpful to me that book. Oh, back. super. Help me 30 days to get my positive addiction going. So I'm very grateful to the, uh, our publisher in China and your supervision of these translations and making these four books available to, to the Chinese readership. There's but there's a new book. Yes. Right. I just finished another book on evocation, which mm. is about using the totality of the palette that's available to communicators. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, therapists have communicated in only one channel, my mouth to your ears, your mouth to my ears. Mm -hmm. But then there's ways of using signification, like gestures, mm -hmm. and ways of using sounds, because this is part of the evolutionary basis of communication, that lower animals use sounds and signals to communicate concepts. And if we want to really communicate concepts in the mm. most vivid ways, we need to use sounds and signals, but then that leads us into using analogies and metaphors, and that leads us into understanding in more depth the strategic process of mm. communicating, which then leads us to understand how can we improvise by utilizing whatever is available to us. So the new book, which will be published in the United States in January or February, is about joining together evocative forms of communication, mm. strategic processes, with a concept of how to utilize whatever is available in the immediate situation in ways that are strategic, in ways that are signifying, to deepen the realization of conceptual understandings. And then after that, sometime next year, I hope to finish a book on attunement. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how the basis of rapport is how two people attune themselves to each other. So as you have your head tilted slightly to your right, I have my head tilted slightly to the left so that I'm parallel to you. Now mm. I don't have to think about that anymore because I just attune myself to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're nodding your head a little bit, I'm nodding my head a little bit. If your hands are down on your lap, then I'm doing something similar so that there can be a biological, a socio-cultural, biological basis to rapport as being the first step to creating likability and responsiveness and uh, influence. So that that's uh, another book that's uh, uh, being written right now, now that I've finished the one on evocation. Sounds wonderful and I couldn't wait to just translate them and I'm the most bene beneficial person because once I translate that... You understand. Yeah, I understand yes. that. And but you can't do this until you finish your book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. And if they want to learn other things, do you have any plan like uh, next year in 2019 coming to China? Yes, I, I come to China and uh, I, I have uh, programs for teaching coaches and I have programs for teaching professionals about psychotherapy and so these are on my website site jeffreyzyke.com and uh, um, any of the professional people who want to have training can come and there I think I'm coming in May June and also in September but you'll be there too yes. because some of these programs have multiple faculty and you uh, are, are almost always there when I'm teaching in Guangzhou for example I was just always there. It's uh, I, I don't well, want to miss any of your workshop. No, but I re yeah. also rely on you because you're one of the assistants and one of the trainers, and so we have. This is not just about me. This is about bringing together a team of people who help mm. people to educate themselves. And you know, psychotherapy is something that requires a post-scarcity consciousness. If, if, if all that you can do is struggle for bread or for rice, you don't care about your anxiety, your depression, you just have to feed your family and you have to provide shelter. But as China, and I've seen in the amazing advance of China from around 1985 to the present day, the infrastructure of China is incredible. The way in which the uh, middle class of China has developed is incredible. It's fabulous. and. Uh, 
uh, now that people have more means, they can then focus on some of their existential issues, psychological issues, social issues. And so China is importing right now uh, mm -hmm. experts who will bring psychotherapy to China because it hasn't really been necessary right. in the culture. But now that there's more opportunity, more economic development, people can think about these things and need some expertise. But I fully expect that there'll be the development of a Chinese uh, mentality and a Chinese cult enculturated style of providing psychotherapy, which may be based on some Western principles, but will incorporate the beauty of Chinese culture yes. and just like um, when I studied Buddhism, the Thai Buddhas looked like Thai figures and the Chinese Buddhas look Chinese and the uh, Cambodian Buddhas look Cambodian. But in the Christian world, Christ looks the same no matter what country you're in. But in the Asian world, there's been an adaptation that has been an amalgamation of the local culture with some concepts that are brought in from outside. And I really hope that psychotherapy will develop in a way that represents uh, Chinese roots, perhaps amalgamated with some uh, um, branches from the United States, but I, I have great faith in the development of a particularly Chinese culture for psychotherapy. For me, you were just like a Zen master, like a Tao master, because uh, even you are from the Western, but you really understand this Eastern philosophy and you c incorporate them very well. And that's uh, in, in this book, I think a lot of Chinese, they can find it's very synchronized with our, with our uh, philosophy, yeah, understanding so. of Taoism or like a Buddhism, like a going with the flow. And you, you really demonstrate that, like uh, not just saying it, but you really create and provide that kind of experience. Yeah, when I was a, an undergraduate in the university, I had a minor in Asian culture and religion. I took every course that I could in Asian culture mm. and religion, including courses on Buddhism uh, gradu at the graduate level. And so I have incorporated many things that I have learned about Asian culture. As a matter of fact, at one time in my life, rather than a psychologist, I thought I would be a Buddhist scholar, but <laughs> I needed to learn too many languages and I didn't think I could accomplish that. So I'm glad that I moved in psychotherapy, but I've been heavily influenced by what, I what I've studied and read about Asian life. Because when you talk about utilization, the principle of utilization, evocative experience, it's exactly the Zen's mm -hmm. master they are doing, they are talking about that. And you just make it so clear to us yes, how I, we can have a better life. I suffer from clarity, so I try to make everything very clear so that even average readers can understand the ideas and they don't have to be so terribly uh, versed in some esoteric language. This is simple terms that, in, that anybody should be able to understand mm. and utilize. Mm. And thank you very much. It's I learned pleasure. that this interview with you, it's really, I learned a lot of wisdom from just our conversation. Oh, it's, uh, you know, I, I greatly value you and greatly value, I think one of the joys of my life is having you in it. So you've been incredibly helpful to me and uh, I appreciate all that you've done in making some of the books that I've done available in China. So thank you. Bless you. You are my spiritual father. So it's yes. like I would my do, spiritual son. <laughs> do anything for my father. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bless so you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then one more thing is, uh, let's make a two minutes, two minutes like a video to, like a, that this uh, just especially for this uh, group of people. Okay. Like uh, they are going to buy a lot of books. So, Zhen Qi Feng, Zhen Zhen Qi Feng, Zhen Qi Feng, Yes, Qi Feng, Zhen Qi Feng, Yes, Zhen Qi Feng, and then Fu Li Zhen. Fu Li Chen, no, 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 Fu no, no, Li, no. Fu like a forty. Yeah. Fu Li, Fu Li, Fu Li Chen, Chen. Fu Li Chen. Yeah. Okay. And then the. Fu Li Chen and okay. Tong Xing, Tong Xing Li. Okay. okay. So just uh, to the camera, so just I'll say first, so okay. you can remember that. Okay. Thank you. We want to specially thank.
Zhen Qifeng Laoshi and Fu Li Juan Laoshi, they are ever to this, and we have the Dr. Zach to say thank you. Yeah, please, thank you so much. I wish that I could repeat in adequate Mandarin your names and the names of the organizations. Zhen Qifeng. Zhen Qifeng. Yes, and Fu Li Juan. And Fu Li Juan. Yes. Super. Wonderful. Wow, I'm speaking Mandarin. Yeah, you're speaking Mandarin in Chinese. And the organization? And that organization is Tang Xin Li. Tang Xin Li. Tang Xi, Tang Xi. The the translation is sugar psychology. Tang Xi, Tang Xi, Tang Xi, Tang Xi, Tang Xi. Tang Xi, yes. Both of my sisters are learning Mandarin, so I'm a little bit behind the curve. But I'm glad that I have the opportunity to practice a little bit of Mandarin. I'll show it to my sisters; they'll be very proud of me. And they are, they are, they were in your November conference when you do the skyping with them. So they're the host. Oh, beautiful! So you want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for that opportunity to speak to the public by using WeChat. I really appreciate it, and hope there'll be more opportunities. For us to collaborate on on projects that are of mutual interest. Bless you. And thank you for like promoting the book, Jeff's book. I think it'll be big help to a lot of people, not just professional people, also the general population. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Super. Okay. And happy Chinese New Year. It's yes. coming soon. Which year is this? <laughs> you, you're oh, no. oh no! I need to count. Okay, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get my iPhone and see what's the Chinese uh -huh. year. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll find it. It's not the year of the boar because that was that. It's the year before the boar. Next year is the year of the boar, the year of the pig. Give me a second. Okay, this is uh, hmm. Hmm. oh. Next year is the year of the boar, 2019. Yeah, the year of the pig. Yeah, yeah. How come I know this and you don't? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know uh, that. Yeah, it's the really yeah, so year, year of the boar. Because You're right. I, I, oh, I, I was oh, born in the year of the boar, <laughs> so. Uh, it's oh yeah, that's uh -huh. right. Seventy-two. Yeah, and we'll mm -hmm. celebrate your my, my birthday six times in past the zodiac. Yes, yeah. Super. We'll celebrate your birthday in China. That would be great. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Charlie. We're good.